What's up everyone, excited to give this video today about PACB, Pacific Biosciences. So first off, this is not financial advice, so please do your research in D&D. In this video, I will be going through the recent initiation with a buy rating at Goldman Sachs. I will also cover the, the stocks chart. Then I will go into short interest and dive into the company's financials. So with that being said, let's talk. Let's go right through it. So Goldman Sachs initiated a buy rating for PACB. Um, and they basically just said um, the company leadership is impressive. And then they had they have a price target of seventeen dollars, which is which re represents thirty percent upside for the stock. So very good an initiation here. Um, and Goldman also estimates that the sequence in market will reach eleven point one billion dollars by twenty twenty six. And expects PACB will capture 5% of the share, accounting for a 44.3% revenue compounded annual growth rate over that time. So for those that don't know, this company designs, develops, and manufacturings and manufactures uh, sequencing systems to resolve genetically complex problems. And kind of why that is important was is a this sequencing process is basically a laboratory method that is used to determine the entire genetic makeup of a specific organism or cell type. This method can be used to find changes in areas of, of the genome. These changes may help scientists understand how sp specific disease such as cancer forms, right? So it's it's very important. It's a new industry. It's kind of like the, the AI of the medical space, if you would. Um, and then, you know, I, I really do think that Goldman, you know, initiating this buy on the stock is a very big deal. But let's dive into the chart. Let's make a price prediction based on where shares are trading. So shares topped out at this, you know, $12.40 level in November, in January, and in April. And we have recently came above that level and we came back down to test that level last week on Tuesday we held and we moved higher so this tells me that this $12.40 level is very strong support for share so I would consider this kind of buying range a very very strong um, you know area to add some shares so the mo momentum for the stock is very very bullish so the 50-day moving average crossed about the 200-day moving average back on November 17th of 2022. That is definitely a good sign. That is called a golden cross and is definitely the most widely watched and followed um, moving average signal. So great sign there. Love to see that bullish mo momentum really lining up with, um, you know, a, a test of support and a confirmation, which I believe should lead to shares continuing this move higher. And really, I, I, I do think you know, we're likely to see a significant jump up over the coming weeks. Um, I, I think that $17 pr price target for Goldman isn't a crazy one. Um, I would see, I would say really the next major level of resistance would be about 1980. Um, this is where shares had bottomed in 2020 of in December. And then also in May of 2021, it's also where shares had found some support in December of 2021 before falling. So I do believe we likely move up to about 19 bucks over the coming months for this outperforming and breaking out stock. But with that being said, let's take a look at some seasonality trends. So this screen shows me which months the stock typically does best in. So in June, the stock typically rises 4.1%. In July, it typically drops 7.6%. So we're going into a bearish seasonal month. But after that, we have an amazing August month. So we have, tw on average, shares jump 27% in August. So, you know, obviously July isn't the best, but we're about to hit that August month, that best month on history for shares, which I believe could help provide, um, you know, some more upside momentum for this for the stock um so that is you know seasonality trends bearish for the next month but overall um you know over the next six months we're we're only we're positive four out of six on average so definitely some seeing the seasonal trends be in the bull's favor 
then when we take a look at short interest so in terms of short interest the company is the shares sold short are about 10 percent as you can see here um, but what's interesting here is days to cover is 6.7 for those that don't know days to cover simply puts um, simply says that how many days of average volume um, is needed to cover the existing shares that are sold short so in PACB's case it takes 6.7 days of average volume to cover the shares that are sold short so um, typically when we're looking for a short squeeze we look for about 10 on days to cover we're not seeing that here yet but I would give this probably like a B, a B minus in terms of short squeeze uh, possibility. So it's possible, but it's not, it's not like a GameStop or AMC, like A++ rating, you know. Um, so definitely, um, definitely a good amount of shorts in the stock, um, but not seeing a huge read of a short squeeze. So with that being said, let's jump into the financials of the company. So... Obviously, the company doesn't make money, um, and we're seeing EV to sales at 25 times compared to the sector median of 4.1, which is obviously a pretty bad number. And then price to sales is 22 compared to the sector median of 4.1. So not great numbers, although to be fair, in health in the healthcare sector, this um, you know valuations are typically lower because growth is typically you know projected as lower um, but obviously this company has significant upside so it's tough to kind of compare these numbers to the healthcare sector um, but it's just something we have to do um, because there aren't many peers um, but with that being said let's take a look at price to book so price to book is 5.5 um, compared to the sector median of 2.8 um, and then we could take a look at the peers as well So you can see here, um, you know, over the past year or so, or exactly a year, um, PACB has been significantly outperforming these peers, which is a good sign in terms of momentum. And then how the stock, um, you know, kind of stacks up in terms of valuation, we can see that most of these companies do make money, um, which um, isn't shocking, um, but, you know, when we take a look at price to book, the, these companies do have a better price to book ratio, um, but it's not massively better, right? It's, you know, you're seeing 4.6 here for OLK. Um, and for those that don't know, PACB's 4.8 price to book ratio just means that the company has 4.8 times the, um, so its market cap is 4.8 times the value of its of its assets on its balance sheet. So that could be property, cash, equipment. Um, so decent number there, especially given this is the, is a stock with um, higher growth potential for um, for the most part. So we look at growth here. We can see PACB is at 26% for the next 12 months. So that that projection beats every single stock. Um, besides OLK, um, and then you could say o OLK kind of takes the cake in terms of growth, um, just because year-over-year -year growth for OLK was 39% compared to PACB's year-over-year -year revenue growth of 4.9%, and then when we take a look at profitability, so we're able to see that the pro that the gross profit margin is 36%, which, and for those that don't know, gross profit margin is just basically revenue minus cost of goods sold. Um, so it tells you what you make every single time you sell something. So I always give this example. If you're you know, making lemonade and you're selling lemonade at a dollar and it costs you uh, 70, 74 cents to make that lemonade, well, then you're making 36% on every single sale. That let that cost doesn't account for the you know lemonade stand, the permits to get to get the lemonade, the, the taxes, everything that kind of goes into that. Um, so just just a quick explainer there. Net income margin is pretty poor though, at minus 239% compared to the sector median of minus 6.8%. And then when we look at cash per share, the company has a dollar and 42 cents of cash per share, 
which is pretty solid. It, that's that's about 10% of the market cap, so not not too shabby there to have a, a, a pretty robust um, you know cash on the sideline, which definitely gives the company some um, safety, I would say. And then when we look at this um, profitability metrics compared to the close peers, we do see that PACB doesn't grade out the best in terms of gross profit margin. It's you know kind of the the third worst here, so kind of middle of the pack. Um, so not the best. Um, but then we look at net income margin. We're unfortunately the worst compared to the peers. So you know keep that in mind whenever you are you know kind of looking at this stock. So. With that being said, um, you know, I will kind of keep it moving here. Um, and you can see here, total cash per share, $1.42 compared to the sector medians uh, or compared to, um, you know, the peers here, which have a significant amount more cash. Um, so I will go through one last thing here. In terms of analyst revisions, we have seen that Wall Street has become more and more bullish on shares. So over the past three months, we saw that one covering analyst brought EPS revisions up and one covering analyst brought EPS revisions down. But the real notable story is within revenue. We saw eight different covering analysts bring revenue expectations up. This tells me that Wall Street is becoming more and more bullish on shares. So that's definitely a good sign for the stock and should help push shares higher. So I'll end it there. With that being said, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one. If you got some value from this video, please leave a like. We post company breakdowns and important market moving news on this channel on a daily basis. So make sure you are subscribed. If you would like to receive my daily portfolio moves, my exits, my entries, and see how me and my team of analysts are trading the markets, join the Discord through the link in the description below to get our free 7-day trial. Also, if you would like to join our free daily newsletter, sign up to our Substack, which is linked below as well. With that being said, good luck everyone, happy trading, happy investing.